Well, hi and welcome. It is the World Mission Update. I'm Rusty Humphreys. That is Greg Kelly. He is the CEO of World Mission and welcome. Now, last time we last spoke, Greg, we're on our way. We're going to Pakistan. We were. And, and then you're going to go off to India. And then I went and got my um, visa to Pakistan and they said no. And and then so we switched everything and you're in Pakistan. I'm going to India and I got as far as Florida and then I took my COVID test and it was positive. So oh, I, I didn't go to the show. I haven't uh, showed the countries. <laughs> I haven't talked to you. I've been on my back. This is my first day doing anything. So. Wow. Welcome back to America. Buddy, it's so good to be back. I'm telling you, we missed you. Did I miss anything? Was oh, it a, a big trip or did I just, was it a good one to miss? Um, wow. That is a great question. We had an amazing time. I mean, Pakistan was, that's the first time I had been there. Uh, we, although World Mission has been doing ministry there for a long time, you know, we use our international partners. And so we've been sending lots of treasures in there, but I've never been there. So that was definitely a highlight, uh, being able to visit with the Afghan refugees that we've been talking so much about, and but, but, but a lot of other really cool things going on in Pakistan. It's the second most populated Muslim country in the world. So you've got roughly 225 million people, and you know over 90% of them have never heard the gospel. So it's, it's just a huge mission field for World Mission. Mm -hmm. And so um, this huge mission field, first thing I was concerned about was your safety. How yeah. was that? Safety was definitely, there was a priority put on that. So we had actually um, some security and because uh, some of the places that we went to, it was a bit, uh, I think I, I tell people all the time, Rusty, when you, when you go in places where there's large crowds of desperate people, things can happen. And so from that standpoint, you don't want to, you want to be accessible to the people and reach the people, but at the same time, you want to be wise about it, uh, particularly when there's, when you're talking about the, the refugees coming out of Afghanistan and you've got the Taliban and there's informants to even inside of Pakistan, the Taliban is operational. And so, you know, we don't, we don't do big promotions of, Hey, we're coming into town or anything like that, or advertise on billboards. So we're, we're still yeah, pretty. So it's not a big, come on in, meet Greg and learn all yeah. about Jesus. Yeah, we definitely don't yeah. do that. But, no. um, you know, they're, they're, they're obviously requires some coordination ahead of time to organize uh, the meetings that we do do. But there's, there's a, a delicate balance between wanting to do, you know, the ministry and uh, just being safe about it. So we've, I'd never felt in harm's way. Other people I was with maybe, <laughs> maybe had a different, my tolerance for, uh, what is uh, risky is different than most people. Yeah, but um, it, it was amazing opportunity. Amazing. So, did you feel like you? I mean, okay, the safety aside, were you able to uh, meet people, get the treasures out there? What What did you see? What did you do? Yeah, there was really three main focuses in Pakistan. So, the first one being these brick kilns, um, which is modern day slavery going on, Rusty. There's over 15,000 brick kilns in Pakistan. And so, these are essentially the staple of the construction uh, economy of Pakistan, where every structure you see is made out of these bricks. So, just little red bricks, and they're um, you know, produced all around the country, but there's 4 million slaves that are running these places. And it is, it is true in every sense of the word, modern day slavery. And these people are, true. did you see these modern day slaves? We went in there, we, we visited them. That was part of our, part of our focus. So uh, we had to pay the owners of the brick kilns a day's wages in order to get access to the people. And so where we did that at, they welcomed us in and the, the slaves all gathered around and had on their Sunday best because getting a day off was like, it's unheard of because they work seven days a week. They start at five in the morning and go to six o'clock at night. Every single day, they have quotas, make 1200 bricks or you're punished. Uh, your food rations are withheld from you. Um, it's, it's horrible how they're treated. 
And most of them have not had access to the gospel. So we went in there and just loved on them. We shared. When you say most them. of, I would guess none of them. Yeah. I mean, when you're a slave in in you know a place like Pakistan, you didn't get out much. I'm guessing. No, exactly, exactly. So, um, the, the, the Christianity is such a minority in Pakistan. I mean, if 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 out of the 225 million people, 222 million are 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 Muslim, that's not a lot of room for any other religion. And so the the few Christians that there are, they are definitely some in name only that are sort of slaves. But most of the slaves have never had access to the gospel. No one's ever considered to go to them. They're really, when you go to one of these kilns, I mean, you, you've got to be trying to get to one of them because a lot of them are just way off the beaten path. Uh, they're very isolated uh, and re, kind of in remote areas. But when you have, you're literally... Because I'm guessing in Pakistan, even there, they're not bragging, hey, we got slaves, everybody. Oh, right. right? Exactly. It's, it's illegal activity. Oh, it is and illegal in there. It's, it's completely illegal, but they because they bribe the government officials, it's just accepted. And it's been such a part of, it's baked into their culture. And so the acceptance of it um, is just widespread. So it's it's mainly they're owned by Muslims. So there's Muslim slave owners and brick kiln owners are running all these slaves. And what they the way they get them into bondage is they'll come to people that are very vulnerable, and maybe they had a three hundred dollar. We heard as low as a hundred dollar a bill, a medical bill. The owner steps up and pays it, and then they've got them. They've they've got them in. Uh, you know, kind of they they literally own them and they make it almost impossible for if we'll put it this way. We visited four brick kilns and I heard of one scenario where someone was able to pay their dues and be given freedom. One. Wow. And we're talking hundreds of people that we had uh, spoken to and visited with. So it's really I, I had a woman, Rusty, had one of the most powerful things that's ever happened to me in 24 years at World Mission. I was getting ready to speak to this group of slaves, and it's kind of like the group parted, and this young gal, just I found out she was 21 years old, had walked up, and she was coming up to me, and I could tell she was holding a baby. I didn't know if, you know, she didn't know I was a Christian. She didn't know what I was going to share. I didn't know if she wanted me to pray for her child that was sick or what. Well, it turns out, she was asking me to take her child. It's a daughter. She wanted to give her to me because she was terrified of the idea of her child being raised um, in the same torturous environment that she was. And this is a girl who had been raped, uh, sexually exploited. Um, you know, praise now the Lord you, that she was able to have a baby. But you um, didn't take the baby, did you? No. Uh, no. You know, it was. I was just speechless, to be honest with you. And then the Lord just, you know dropped in my spirit what to share with her. And I, I, I looked at her through a translator and I said, you know, how sorry I was for her situation, but that I have a story that's going to change everything. And it's going to give her hope and give her peace. And it will change just everything about her life. Just, you know, let me share this story. And I did. And she received Christ. So she, afterwards, we were talking to her and we said, you know, what, what do you think now, you know, about everything? And she said, you know, the story that you shared has given me hope, not only for me, but also for my daughter. And so it's just a reminder, Rusty, in these places that you go to, that people are living in the worst conditions imaginable. The only answer is the gospel. Yeah, we want to feed them. I'm not diminishing in any way, you know, need blankets, shelter, all those things, right? But fundamentally, the only thing that's going to heal that broken heart is the gospel message. So it's, a, it's just a privilege to share it. Wow. Okay. So um, Pakistan was a success. You got a chance to speak to a, a number of people. Um, you made it back home alive, which was something I was uh, concerned about. Um, anything else in, in Pakistan well, I think um, what, you know. What, the, what, yeah, what what did you see? What else did you learn? Yeah, the there? other two, the other two areas that we zeroed in on, besides the brick kilns that are run by slaves, is we were into the slum area. So when I say slum areas, there's a category of people, not just in Pakistan but also India, called rag pickers. So they're they're people by the millions in both those countries 
that are living in landfills. So they're essentially surviving and living off of other people's junk. And they live in these little shacks and shanties inside the slums. I mean, there's just sewage, just sewage that's running through there, Rusty. You, you want, if you had an animal, you wouldn't want them living in this place. It's the most disgusting um, environment that you could imagine. I mean, just what you smell, what you see, what you taste. I mean, you just can't get away from it. And there's millions of people living in there. So we were, we spent a lot of time in these slum areas and just encouraging people. We did feeding programs. I got a picture of a young girl after we did a feeding program, you know, rice and chicken, um, where the big pot was at. And we were scooping, you know, plates full of rice and chicken. There was, you know, some spillage, just a little bit. I mean, just maybe, you know, several tablespoons. It wasn't like a huge amount. And as we were walking out, I will never forget. I looked down, I see this little girl who's just all dirty and dusty and her clothes are ripped and shredded. And she is down on her hands and knees, picking up kernels of rice, putting it on a piece of paper uh, that she would eat later on, you know? So it, it just, it just breaks your heart, the condition that these people live in. Uh, but again, most of them never heard the gospel. Christians are not going into these places. They're not going to the brick kilns to minister to the slaves. They're not going into the slums and into the landfills to share the gospel. So we really need to, you know, be thinking, um, <laughs> where has the gospel never been? And how can I, as a follower of Jesus, leverage my life and my resources in such a way that's participating in that? Right. And those are two phenomenal examples of places where we need to up our game uh, in the body of Christ and uh, be a little more intentional. Were they? Were you able to bring cameras, video cameras into the brick kilns, or, or was that we, uh, off limits? We, no, we did. We got actually a lot of great footage on this trip that we'll, I'm sure we'll be sharing on future episodes uh, of the World Mission Update. Um, so yeah, let me show my video. For, oh. Yeah, that's right. Rusty, we were going to have horrible. amazing drone, feel, right? You were going to bring a drone. You were going to have... I bought I a were, new drone for it. Yes. I feel we like would have been again. standing in the brick kilns, um, you know, with live world... Oh, I don't want you to feel guilty, Rusty. I, 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 no, really, I do. I feel I really, terrible. I really did miss you, man. I so you terrible. know what that means. That means the next trip, you know where I'm taking you. It's your punishment. I'm taking you back to Bangladesh. That's That's your torture. Thank you. When, <laughs> when is that trip going to happen? No, I'm going to get you to Nepal still, buddy. We okay. are, we are, when we is are Nepal? Is that, Nepal. do you have, do you have plans in, in the near future? 22. We're, we're definitely going to, I'm going to Kenya in 10 days. Um, taking oh, I wasn't people. invited to go yeah. to that one. Well, it's just world mission staff. You, you are, you were the next one uh, to be invited, but I, the trip filled up because I can only take 10 people. Oh, okay. So yeah. But anyway. It's, uh, it's all good. So the third category of people that just real quick is the Afghan refugees. So we've been talking a lot about that situation and I saw, I met them rusty. It was the, of the two weeks I was gone. That was the trip I was looking to the most is standing among refugees. I could see Afghanistan over their shoulder. It was right there. We were, um, right at the border, uh, met, uh, in this particular camp, we were in 300 refugees. And these are people who literally came into Pakistan um, fearing their life. If they stayed in Afghanistan, they wouldn't be alive today. Uh, these are people that out of utter desperation that are just trying to leave the border that the Taliban were hunting. Um, many of them, we were able to be a part of their extraction. So they had, they, they had stories of the Taliban coming after them? One after another. One, there wasn't what did they tell person. you? Well, the, every, the, there wasn't a single person. Um, in several hours that we had spoken to and interviewed, we couldn't interview all of them, but not a single person we met or heard of who didn't have a family member, an immediate family member, mother, father, brother, sister, husband, wife, that was killed. Not one person. Every single person had horror stories of Taliban um, uh, tying their husband to uh, a rope and dragging them around until they lost consciousness and ultimately died, you know, from just the beating of dragging a body, skinning them, uh, horrible things, beheadings, um, shootings. Um, people got 
blown up from so I, it just it's horrific what's going on it continues to go on right now uh, inside of Afghanistan and every single one of these people had a story so um, you know it just breaks your heart but it also uh, reminds you that again the only answer is the gospel and just sharing the good news of Jesus with them is is the beginning of healing the heart and then you can build on that and help them with um, physical things, which we're doing, we're sending them blankets in there. You know, what's interesting, Rusty, and is this camp we were in, 30 people have died in the last two months because of starvation and exposure uh, to, because it's cold, 30 people. And it's because nobody's going in there. They said, you're the only ones who have been into this camp. The, nobody has come here, not the Red Cross, not any other NGO uh, organization has been in there. They're not getting any help. So, um, you know, food is a huge thing. So we, we've got a lot of work to do uh, to help these Afghan refugees in Pakistan. And, and nobody's talking about this. When was the last time you heard about slavery in Pakistan? Right. Or, hey, you know, Afghanistan's kind of out of the news. So let's forget about those people. And that's not what world mission is about. You're not about forgetting about the little people. You're about getting that message, the real message, the message of Christ um, to these people. Yeah, we've got we've got to go um, and take the gospel where it's never been. And these are going to be choppy waters. These are going to be um, uncomfortable places. These are going to be places that aren't safe. Um, these are going to be places that are very hostile to the gospel. Uh, and for all those reasons, we have to get the gospel there. So you're right. I mean, I'm, I'm not interested in taking the gospel where it's already been and kind of building upon another man's foundations. That's what Paul said. I'm taking the gospel where it's never been. And to ears that are virgin ears, as far as the good news of Jesus is concerned, that's our calling as an organization. I mean, if people want to connect with us, they want to be a part of World Mission, just know that's what we're doing. We're going to places where Jesus is unknown. And I think that those two places in Pakistan, the slave, uh, the slavery, the modern day slavery going on in these brick kilns and the Afghan refugees are two very vivid uh, examples that are happening right now now on our watch and now is the time where you can make a difference too by just going to worldmission.cc that's worldmission.cc where you can help greg kelly and his team go and spread the the, the word uh, around the world to those people that have never heard the word before greg yeah you know i think the website is definitely a place to go we do have a a, a direct uh link for the afghanistan work it's worldmission.help and you can find some really specific information on the Afghan work that's going on. But we have right now, I'm just in this last week, I was informed of 200 Christians that have been identified by the Taliban. They're in safe houses uh, inside of Afghanistan and they need to get out. So there, there's, there's immediate needs that are life and death of people. If they don't get out of that country, they will be killed. It's not a matter of if, but when we have to extract them. Uh, and then you've got the intermediate need of people that are in these camps that they need food, they need uh, blankets, uh, they need to be discipled in the Word of God. And then the long-term need is our training centers, which are going to be discipleship-making machines that will have one set up in Pakistan here. But So those are three expressions, the short-term, immediate, the, the, mid, the mid-term, which is helping the refugees that are in these camps, and then a long-term uh, because we can't just kind of go over this like a speed bump. We have to have an intentionality that's long term so that all of Afghanistan is reached with the gospel. And that's where you guys come in. So thanks for being a part of the World Mission Update. Well, Greg, thank you for d- doing what you did. And uh, we're going to have to talk about India coming up soon. And you're going to be uh, in my neighborhood in a, in a week or so. And uh, we'll do, probably do a show from there as well. And, and then Kenya coming up and who knows what else you're up Not to. Not going out, so. buddy. All right, so go to worldmission.cc. Also, worldmission.help, where you can go to help. And until next time, for Greg Kelly, I'm Rusty Humphreys, and this is the World Mission Update.